Podcast. Welcome to Apple Hype. I'm your host as always, Brian Dressel. With me as always is Jonathan Hardy. You did it! Chewy Darso. Hi! Emily Blake! Hey! Uh, and I guess Sam Garrison is usually here. She's here as well. Yeah! <laughs> she's pretty common. Yeah. Uh, she was actually in our Annihilation episode. You just didn't hear her. Yeah, she was just quietly... She was annihilated. <laughs> I'm a bear! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll do. A, we'll just jump right into this thing, and we'll start with a "Where have you been doing?" Uh, I'll go first. Uh, I was talking to them before we started recording about this one. I went and saw Incredibles two, uh, and I liked it. it. It's a tough movie not to like. It is a aggressively entertaining, but it's also the exact same movie as Incredibles one. Exact and same. Nothing new to the table. It was like and, watching Hangover two. Yeah, and has a really weird five minute apology for being fourteen minutes late at the front end of it that I didn't know why I was there, and it was it was. Kind of oh awkward. yeah, I remember that. And I was yeah, like, what it, are you apologizing yeah, for? Yeah, I don't understand. The, the apology actually made me more angry at the end of the movie because they're apologizing for how long it takes the writers and storytellers to come up with something. And then I'm like, but they just, they just use the same script and they switched it. Yeah, it's the same movie. Uh, I did spend a lot of time. I'm still thinking about what it would be like to have a baby like Jack Jack. You, you, it'd be horrible. You'd be horrible. It would yeah. be like you'd have to. The kid would have to grow up in some kind of secret like prison cell. You would die. And you you would die, or the baby would just have to be like in prison. Either way, there's some serious psychological yeah. damage. It'd be impossible. Well, I saw it's it not as even a psychological. It's laser eyes yeah. on a baby on a yeah <laughs> everyone's dead there's no daycare that's safe for that child <laughs> it's my uh, prequel to um guardians rocket's backstory there you go yeah, yeah. he got so traumatized by jack jack that he went into a, a scientist a scientific program yep. totally works yeah yeah uh that's it for me though sam i saw crazy rich asians obviously <laughs> um it was amazing i it blew my mind that it was only a $30 million budget because it is like so luxurious. It is a feast for the eyes. Don't go in on an empty stomach. All the food is beautifully photographed. It's one of the best written movie villains. I'll be writing a column about that. Shameless self-promotion. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it was great. It was everything I wanted to be. It's a beautiful adaptation. The stuff that they chose to trim felt very deliberate and smart. And what they kept was like very essential to the movie. So I loved it. I'm going to see it again. John? Uh, so to kind of, I was feeling nostalgic, and so I decided to rewatch Doctor Who from the Eccleston season, my favorite season, and just kind of go through the episodes again and kind of get myself ready for the new Doctor Who coming out. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was always in the back of my mind, but I mean, it, that season, that first season with Eccleston is my favorite season of them all. And I just liked how they, how it was shot, how it feels so just for lack of a better way to put it, like BBC, like it feels, yeah. it has like such, it feels so stagey and TV like, and there's like kind of a raw edge to it, a rough edge to it that I kind of really warm to. And that as the season kind of went on and became a little better, better produced, got more budget, you know, you start to lose some of that kind of charm. And even though I still like the later seasons, especially Matt Smith's beginning, like I just like this moment in time where this season is just kind of raw and, yeah, so far, I'm about halfway through. I haven't gotten to the episode yet where Rose uh, deals with her dad's death and the time, like, Reaper thing. Right. And, uh, yeah, no, I'm pretty excited to go through the rest of the, se- the series. Uh, <laughs> the first movie that I chose to watch, Sans Our Child, uh, when we went out without him. Oh, okay. Um, was Tag, <laughs> which would seem like an odd choice. But I just wanted a nice... No, like, I don't have to think too much. It just looks like fun, and they're really attractive men. And Brian humored me because, you know, all the stress of having a newborn baby. Didn't want to go to a thinker at all. Uh, I did, but that's okay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a fun movie. So if you ever want to just really turn your brain off and enjoy some really attractive rich people (laughs) run after each other, uh, I forgot Jeremy Renner. He's the main reason we went to the movie. He's the main reason we went to see his butt. Oh, you do see his butt. Yes. And you just get to see him do fun hero poses, looking confident, which they never give him as a hot guy anymore, because I don't understand. Don't put him in the movie at all. Spoilers. We're going to get to that (laughs) soon. I'm fine with that. So hot guy is being cool, playing tag with his guy friends, and then we're going to, and all this other stuff is happening in Wakanda. (laughs) I mean, it makes sense. (laughs) Uh, Emily, what about you? Uh, I watched Disenchanted. Um, I logged on to Netflix, and Netflix was like, here's a show you would like. And then I was like, that is a show I would like. And then I watched it in one day. Um, 
It's because you can. You can watch it in a few hours. Uh, the entire first season. It's they. they Isn't it just part one of season one? Oh, it, I don't know. I watched all the episodes. It's the Mac Browning show, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's only part one of season oh, one. Oh, well, all right. Well, you can watch the stuff that's up there yeah. in <laughs> one afternoon. Um, and they the ad was like, from the maker of the creator of The Simpsons. The ads are super wrong because it's not from the creator of The Simpsons. It's from the creator of Futurama. Uh, it's way, way more like Futurama than it is like The Simpsons. It's got the same cast. It's got um, just the level of absurdity. Uh, it's about a princess who's just like not really blending into the princess lifestyle. And she decides she doesn't want to get married. And then she likes to drink and fight and do all kinds of stuff. And she meets up with this elf and then this demon who's pretty cool. And, uh, and then they do some adventures around the kingdom back in the dark ages. And it's pretty funny. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, okay. So we should get started on today's episode, which I Avengers. Found Avengers Infinity War. Dun, dun, dun. Part one. I'm going to say part one yeah. because fuck them for saying this is a standalone movie. No, it's not. No. It's not. You are a bunch of goddamn liars. And that is my biggest complaint with the entire movie. Uh, so well. Also, the Honest Trailers pointed out that like they don't even bother explaining who anybody is. It's like you're either on this train or don't bother. Yeah, Pretty the, much. The idea of this being a standalone movie is n- no, 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 no. But they said the same thing about Civil War and I'm like, no, no. no. Your movies do not work as standalone Clearly movies. Tied That's not to a what problem. Happened in the other films. I have no problem with that. Just stop telling me this. In the sense that like Thanos is the main character and has a singular capsule arc. Yes, but we'll talk about that more. We'll talk about that. Anyway. It, it's still I I see what you're saying, and I yeah, see that's I, how they I, came up with I that. I don't but, disagree with yeah, you. I think it's a marketing thing where they was. know they like, uh, people won't come if they think they have to know so much about the other stuff. So we'll just say it's a standalone, we'll dupe them, we'll get their money. Disney. Sense. Yeah, but like people. Oh, anyway. We'll we'll get to it. Yeah. More so after Sam tells us everything that happens. All of it. All of it. To we every character. Details about all the characters. And so we need, much. And movie. we also need to know why it's poignant for each one of them. But you saw that show since before. nobody knew that this was going to happen, I'm actually going to throw a bit of a curveball. Uh, Sam is going to tell us everything that happens to Thanos in this movie. Oh, Emily is going to tell us everything that happens to Thor. I'm ready for that. In this movie, Chewy. Is going to tell us everything that happens. Wait, I'm going to be on camera? No. Just oh. Sam will be on camera. Uh, we're probably <laughs> probably not going to have a video segment for this thing, because I didn't want to tell anyone okay. this was coming. Uh, Chewie will tell us everything that's going to happen. i got makeup on. I'm ready. Captain America in this movie. And not as much happens to him, but okay. Well, you get the whole Captain America crew. Oh, you know, I'll switch it. You get to tell us everything that happens to Vision in this movie. Okay. Is that everybody? Is that the three major movies? In this well, one movie, Peter, Peter and Gamora have quite a bit. Going Ooh, on. I'll take Peter and Gamora. Okay. I'll take. The there's Peter a woman. Okay. Yeah, or you know, I'll take Iron Man and the Iron Man and the Guardians is where I'll take. And like Strange has a lot going on. He'll be with. He's with Iron Man. Yeah, oh, that's, that's one movie. I'm doing with one movie. Right. Like, the well, groups. The they have groups. Yeah. Who, who, I was busy realizing someone we were needs doing to, a breakdown. Someone does need to do Peter and Gamora then. Okay, Who's, so John gets Peter and Gamora. Okay. Sam gets Thanos. Emily gets Thor. Chewie <gasps> gets the Vision crew. I'll take the Iron Man crew. Good? Good. Good? Okay. okay, that's a perfect everyone talking at the same time clusterfuck. Oh, we're talking at the same time. Hell yes, we are. It. Oh, at the same time. Oh, boy, are we. Oh, man. Okay. So 30 seconds for Iron Man? Thanos. Uh, Peter and Gamora. Thor. Vision and Friends. Go, 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 go. So Every Thanos is so Iron Man is a crusty at Guardians of the Galaxy. He wants to have a kid with everyone. pepper pots, but he doesn't want to have like a kid with pepper pots. And then he meets Doctor Strange, and then Doctor Strange has like yeah, so they catch Thor and they show up. Peter has like a toxic masculine. They're not talking about men who are And so then when Thanos takes over nowhere, Peter is asked to kill Gamora, but he can't because he loves. Well, he actually tries to. They fight Thanos and lose, and then it's all part of the. Kill Gamora, Gamora and then Peter is mad. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. First, well, they go okay. to the Avengers Tower. We're out of time. I did mine in five seconds. Oh, what did you say? <laughs> he collects some rocks, kidnaps his daughter, hits the other one, and snaps. Ah. Mm. I, I went for a long pause and just said, they fight Thanos and lose. And he snaps. That has multiple meanings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, definitely works. I'm, I spent a little too much time talking about his eyes. I got to the part (laughs) when they got to the Avengers uh, compound. It's not tower, actually. I said tower, but it's more of a compound. 
I like how all the events of Thor Ragnarok were immediately undone, much like Alien 3 at the beginning of the movie. First, before we, before we get into that, I, want, I do want to apologize but to anyone who's they? listening to this on the road who just crashed because of our <laughs> cacophonous <laughs> breakdown. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was... Uh, you can, but the good news is you can listen to it over and over again. And then in the hospital. Yeah. He's different. Yeah. yeah. Mine, mine was a complete and utter clusterfuck, but I'm oh, okay yeah. with it. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of how I feel like this movie should be approached because this movie was essentially, in my opinion, tell me if I'm wrong, a bunch of different movies kind of placed together. Uh, they're, they're slammed together. If you take a bunch of yeah. movies in your hands and smash I, them together, that's what this was. I don't it's think a, it was slamming. I, I don't think it was smash. I think this was very intentional. Mm-hmm. Like, these are the stories we're going to tell yeah. and we're going to use Thanos to tell a through line of these other movies. To, a didn't... way to kind of bring them together. And I didn't even realize until today that Iron Man and Cap still haven't seen each other nope. since Civil War. Like, I was like, oh shit. But it... it I didn't even really think about it until now. I'm like, oh yeah. crap! It, but it all works because you didn't feel like anything. They they alluded to it. And yeah, it was all good. Um, but I want to start with kind of what Sam was talking about before we started uh, our monstrosity of a breakdown. Uh, this movie, in my opinion, is not a standalone film. I get what they are saying when the Russo brothers are like, no, it is because Thanos is the main character. So that's where I want to start with this is because yes, Thanos is the main character of this movie. But I don't think they did a good enough job with that to make this a standalone film. You um, only get things from his perspective, like actually walking with him and not people's reactions to him, like in two almost dream sequences. Yeah. Everything else is the reactions to him, not just him. Well, I think another thing that they might have meant is like it's a standalone film. Excuse me. Um, is that uh, you don't need to have seen all the films to no. understand it and i think that's like a they can't be like hey this is the sort of movie where if you've only been following the adventures of iron man you'll still kind of have an idea of what's going on it, this is a standalone film is a nice shorthand i think yeah. um and i'm sure that they focus tested that because like i hadn't seen i'll never see another spider-man movie in theaters again fuck that guy i like tom holland but like I'm sure shit not gonna put any more money toward that franchise and uh you know i i caught on i was still emotional yeah you know yeah. at the end when the like little boy disappeared civil war dr strange guardians ragnarok and ragnarok you'd be okay yeah yeah totally i, my, I gave my sister the digital code that i got with my blu-ray because i'd already bought it digitally because i got oh, free and black money. Panther. um i think you could skip black panther i think if you've seen civil war you don't need to see black oh, that's panther true. Yeah. um yeah. i told my sister because she'd seen yeah, like most of phase no... one implications like, for this one yeah a little because like, fe- it ends up in wakanda but yeah that's but it still, yeah. but you already know from civil war that wakanda exists yeah. and is yeah. technologically advanced the only thing you're confused about is who's that hottie winston duke yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i told my sister to watch civil war and ragnarok before this and that's all she watched and she had no problems she's like oh yeah it made sense i'm glad i watched those two first but that i was hadn't it. seen homecoming and i was still like oh i wish i'd seen homecoming before watching this but it didn't ruin my all you'd missed out was who was that friend that he tapped on the shoulder well, i've seen it now answer. yeah in a sense but yeah yeah i still don't really like homecoming that's why we haven't I done it on this show because it's, it's not really spider-man yeah, it's, it's, it's spider-man as a lackey to iron man yeah they, uh, it's a whole i've never been a big spider-man fan so i'm actually gonna like the, them. there's Same, so much to talk about with avengers <laughs> let's not go down the spider-man uh, okay hole. okay that's good. Um, no more no bear holes yeah <laughs> oh but i think whether or not it's a standalone movie i mean that's just marketing language sure and that's yeah. what gets asses in seats but at the end of the day this was um I think like Marvel's given up on standalone. It's it's yeah, totally. serialized yeah, I don't filmmaking. Think they needed yeah. that to get yeah. no, us and I, I totally was, agree. Yeah, this was like as watching it again, I realized like the the first time I saw Avengers because it was kind of unprecedented, like mm-hmm. having so many franchises merge into one space and create like a cohesive film. Sure. Um, this did that with even more shit, and I I know it was like several different storylines, but that's like any movie with an ensemble cast. Absolutely, like yeah. you could say that about return of the king or two towers you know um but like it, it's just, sorry i like totally lost my train of thought but um no Lord of the as, ah. yeah <laughs> as, a, as a but as a culmination of what is it what it was like as a culmination of 10 years of storytelling yeah. it i think they did the best they could i, I think like they honest did, to god yeah. i don't think it could have been better i think they did a good job i think they did a yeah. great job like I, i've watched this that movie was not on, easy no and like uh even joss whedon was like yeah when i teased thanos i didn't know how they were going to do it i think they did a great job so even if you have joss whedon going like yeah they did better than i could have it's they did a great job like i don't mean to take a knock at it like the complaint about it not being a standalone mm-hmm. film i'm fine with it like i'm just tired of being told like oh no this one is this it's like you, you like like we're on board. Like you can just tell us what it is. Like clearly at this point, like we're going up to see the most comic booky of comic book movies that Marvel has made to date. 
we're on board. Like we're into this at yeah. this point. Um, you're only going to this movie if you're on board. Like, yeah, yeah like, you know, I think I'll check out a Marvel movie. Yeah. Let me watch the one that every single character is in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. and I really like. I appreciated that they they went for. To that. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it's introduced the to them all at once. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate that they they decided to make the one real solid character arc Thanos. Like I thought that was a really good move because if it, you do, if you look at this through the guise of Thanos is the main character. He's the only guy who has like the legit like I have a goal. This is what's in my way of attaining that goal. I get past that. I reach my goal. I ride off into the sunset. Yeah, he wins at the end. It's yeah. finally a, a villain. Does he in this. though? Well, he wins at the end of this movie. No, no, no. Does he though? Like he accomplishes he achieves his goal. He, he achieves his goal, but it's like Gamora says, at what cost? Like right. the the gauntlet disintegrates. The ga- or the gauntlet gets fucked up. Yeah. W- when you see him again, he may be trapped in the soul stone dimension with everyone else like we've never seen that beautiful like mulan looking rice patty that he's in yeah. you know um gamora is a child again they're together but we don't see anyone else around he's been severely injured because thor did succeed in in the <laughs> in the thoriest way possible. <laughs> but like so Thor-y. that's that's what's so great is like Yes, Thanos achieved his goal, but I'm not sure it went how he intended because it's not like he. I don't think he still has that power. I don't think he still has the six and. Inf- like, I don't think he needs it. He did yeah, the thing that he said. I don't think do. he wants it. I, just on my comic book based whatever, I go. He definitely still has that power because you can't destroy Infinity Stones. They you are, can't destroy Infinity Stones, but maybe he can't wield them. That is possible. That, yeah. that is po- that'd be unprecedented, but I'm okay. And with now that. we're getting like, into like fan yeah. theories and exactly. shit. But I'm just that's, saying, I don't think, I don't think the win was as decisive as he wanted it well, to be. I mean, no, I think not at that's all. what makes it a good character arc. But though, I think that because th- when you're your hero in your own story, you achieve your goal, and it might not necessarily make you happy. There's yeah. plenty of times when someone gets the thing that they've been pursuing the entire time, and then then once they get that thing, it's like, what you wish for. did I want that? Is that really worth it? Especially yeah. since I think we know in the second movie it's all going to be undone. Oh, well, thank you, comics. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, but also that's one of the reasons I enjoyed watching it the second time, um, knowing how it ended. The second time was really cool to watch uh, Strange and Iron Man and everybody else kind of work through that. Like it's very obvious that that was the plan because Peter Quill. Quinn? Quill. Quill. Quill, thank Quill. you. I yep. always get Peter Quinn and Peter Quill very mixed up, and they're two completely different characters. Um, but uh, watching him go, this was my plan, I want everybody to know that, is a very clear moment where they're going, this was not Strange's plan. This was very much his plan, and that's because they needed a plan to make sure that Thanos didn't think that they were letting him win. And so when he says it's the only way at the end, this was probably part of, I don't know how, but it was part of some greater strategy, which I thought was just very cool to see the second time over, watching how they say things and do things, knowing that this was on purpose. They lost Cause, on purpose. Because Strange, oh, yeah. Strange doesn't make any movement to stop Quill from attacking nope, Thanos and, and Titan. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's one of those like when he says he's like, the second most powerful being on that planet, and he lets shit hit the yeah. fan. So it's clearly yeah. like he had a plan. They needed a plan to trick Thanos, so they went with his plan to let him like, yeah. to mm-hmm. have he something. Said, like, that, that's, it's mm-hmm. one of the things where it almost annoys me. Like almost, but not. Not quite where it's like when he says like i saw what is like 14 million different outcomes yeah how many do we win one and it's like okay well now we know we're doing that one yeah it's like okay i mean that's fine but like still, i'm into it but it's like it didn't bother me i still liked it because the first yeah. time didn't through, bother me because either. the first time through i thought that was the plan that they went with and it failed and i kind of forgot that he would have seen it you know yeah. and then it wasn't until the second time through like uh Okay, okay. As he's disappearing, it was the only way. The only yeah. way. Like, We're in the end game now. I it's think like, they, yeah. they needed that scene so that you knew all wasn't. I mean, we all knew all wasn't lost anyway, but it's yeah. still like. Yeah, Black you a Panther bit just of... made how much money and they're going to kill him? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's like, yeah. sorry. We already have a Spider Man movie coming out. Like, yeah. it's like. <sighs> that was the most interesting thing, too, being left with the original Avengers. At the end. Plus yeah. a couple, yeah. Plus a couple, but I mean, yeah. the the ones that were left were all OG, like the yeah. you know, that like that's that touch, was yeah. really fascinating, especially because yeah. Tony is uh, all but a, like alone except for what Nebula. Gamora or yeah, no, Nebula, Gamora. sorry, yeah, on Titan, yeah, yeah. 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 But we have we have the original Avengers, and then we have Nebula and Rocket, and is that it? Um, we have War Machine. He's uh, he survived. Uh, is he was, it Okoye? I think was still alive. Wasp yeah. is still no Ant Man's around, but he was in a different movie. Yeah, that's. Ant-Man. Can we can we spoil yeah. Ant Man? Are we okay with that? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Are we okay? It's my fault for not. I, I feel it. like 
if you if you're, I mean, you're not you know watching what I'm gonna spoil it. Yeah, you're not watching I, this right if you're spoiled. It, but that's this, my fault for not having seen it by is now. All about yeah. spoilers. Ant Man survives the snap because he's in the microverse. That's the the thing. It's not the microverse, whatever the fucking Marvel version of the microverse is. Um, I know DC. Too, the shrinkage so force. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like there, there's shrinky dinky timey wimey. <laughs> I, I don't remember where we were going with this, but like we have like we have the original Avengers left, which led to a whole bunch of fan theories of that means all the original Avengers are going to die because their contracts are up. It's like I don't. That's um, I, I don't think they're all going to die, but I think some of them will. I, I kind of the more I've gotten He's distance been playing these characters for a long time. Yeah, yeah, but like the more I've gotten distance from this movie, and the more I've just kind of gone like begun to trust Marvel to be Marvel. It's like no one's going to die. Like no. it, it, at the end of the next movie, I think. We might lose Iron Man. There's a chance, and I think that's a slim chance. I think they're gonna Paul Walker him. You think so? Yeah, yeah. like because he's he's getting he a kid. Yeah, he's gonna get a sunset. kid. Yeah, he's gonna and they're gonna be like, Iron it's been a long ten yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like I don't. Like, <laughs> that would be the, the only one we have a chance yeah. of losing would be Iron Man. Like I think Gamora's coming back. I think they're all coming back. Like yeah. it, it's just. Marvel doesn't like killing off their characters, like both comic books and, and movies. Just, and that's okay. It's just a it's trope just, of comic books. No yeah. one's actually dead. Plus, the joy is in watching how they do it. Like, I I don't yeah. know. I have no idea how the fuck that was a plan they thought would work, especially since they didn't know which people were Valkyrie going to be Because Valkyrie and taking. Korg are still out there. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> I but think. I mean, but I mean, like, <laughs> we don't know how, I mean, unless this is something from the comic book, but, but like, we don't know how they're going to fix it. And that's what I'm interested in, is how the fuck, how, well, that happens all the time oh. in TV shows. Shows, where we also, you get your characters into a corner and you're like, how the fuck are they going to get out? I know they will. I don't know how. Well, the, the, in the book, the character who fixed everything does not exist mm. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They Adam hint at Adam. They hint at Adam Warlock at the end of Guardians I will too. name it for Adam. him Adam. But yeah, uh, he's the one who fixes everything. It's him and Nebula who do a lot of like, the this changing. This movie it's going to be Captain Marvel. I also have to yeah. point out, we also have Lady Sif hanging out there somewhere. Mm. <laughs> she's Sip in a bit of a blind spot. Yeah, she's uh, somewhere. <laughs> Boom! And she just needs her memory back. I mean, well, that was the, the finger snap of this podcast. I'm out. <laughs> the fact that Lady Sif like and Valkyrie are out there is like kind of important. I think. Yeah. I, and again, Captain Marvel, which was alluded yeah. to at the end, is out there. I don't think the Russo brothers are going to use Valkyrie or Lady Sif. I agree that it should be important, but I don't think they're coming back. No, no. Um, T. T. Tom did sign a multi-picture deal. No, she did, but I don't think... I think she signed it after they'd already filmed Infinity Wars. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, I think... Because when they filmed the the destruction scene... Yeah. Um, that was, like, on one of Taika's sets. She would That's have been true. there. Yeah. So, like, I'm just... So there is a chance she could come... Yeah. But, I uh, love that they opened on that lo-fi aesthetic, too. Yeah. That was... I mean, it killed me. The The opening to this movie killed me. I was like, why the fuck am I watching? You killed the two babes. You know... Well, I, yeah. you left one. The, the one. But. As a fan of his work, the fact that the first person who speaks in this movie is Kenneth Branagh... Ah. Oh. I'm just so happy. <laughs> it was totally an Alien 3 move, though. Yeah. It was just like, yes, everyone got off Ragnar. Oh. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I still think Korg's out there with his pamphlets. And they did say, like, the Rooster Brothers, because they knew how much everybody loved Tessa Thompson, like, yeah, she made it off. She's fine. They didn't say anything about Korg, but they were very clear that Valkyrie survived Thanos' attack. I, just, I also don't trust Loki actually being dead. I just don't. I do, because I think, I think Hiddleston's I even like Thor's line, well, he's been dead before. How many times can you kill him, though, before yeah. it's ridiculous? Um, that's I a think comic that's, book movie. If they do it one more time, then it becomes fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, just killing poor, tired Tom <laughs> Hiddleston. That moment, though, broke my heart, because it's like, it's obvious. Thanos is not a fucking idiot. And nope. and a minute ago, Loki was like, fuck you. And now Loki's like, I changed my mind. You're great. You know, and it's like th- seeing Loki finally say Odin's son and finally give yeah. a shit about, open that he gives a shit about his brother and finally being the hero way too late to be effective. But it was still like, oh, Loki. Poor I really <laughs> hope that in the next movie, they're just going around the town or something. And then Loki's just at a coffee shop. They see him across the <laughs> and street. Alfred with just Anne, like with Anne Anne Hathaway him. and Michael Caine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's what I want. <laughs> uh, we're kind of spiraling all over the place in this thing. I want to kind of go back. and I want to go a little bit more character to character because that's kind of how this movie's done. And we've done the Thanos thing for the most part. But the last thing I kind of want to hit on before we move into everybody else is I want to talk about how the Russo brothers were incredibly smart with the Infinity Stones themselves. Because we've seen the Infinity Stones now for 10 years in various movies and whatnot, but they've done a real piss-poor job explaining what they do. Right. And the Russo brothers had the incredible task of explaining both what an Infinity Gauntlet does and what each stone does. 
And I thought the way they did it, and like if you watch the round table uh, thing that's on the Blu-rays and all the things, they talk about it. At least I think it was in there. might have been behind the scenes. Whatever. It's one of the special features. And it was very smart of every time Thanos gets a stone, the next scene he uses it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. after I thought about them, like, oh, yeah. yeah, that totally works. Like, every time he gets something, the next time, like, especially, like, the, the one that got me the most was the reality stone. When they go mm-hmm. to uh, nowhere. To nowhere, yeah. That uh. scene is so good. Like, it, it works. Like, because you know the whole time, like, wait, Thanos would not get taken out like this. Like, even if you're not a fan of comics and you don't know who Thanos also is. really early in the movie. Yeah, like, you're watching this going, what's wrong with this? Like, there's clearly right. something wrong. And I, I just, I love the way it plays out. Oh, and when that gun puts out bubbles and you're like, holy shit, he did it. Like, yeah. he was going to kill her. And I didn't expect him to actually pull the trigger. And that was really amazing. A moment for both of them as characters. Yeah. I, for me, that scene was a kind of irritating because I'm like, Thanos is not going to give him the option to kill her unless he knows she's not going to be able to do it. So a lot of that. Exactly. Made. Right. So I was. But, just, but for me, that moment was more about Peter pulling the trigger. Yeah. Oh, and my God, when the, I think it's, yeah, when Mantis and Drax come after him and they turn into cubes in a big spiral thing, which is lifted exactly out of the Infinity Gauntlet book. <laughs> oh, so beautiful to see on screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also like that Thanos, it was the first sign that we saw that he did care about Nebula, allowing her to have kind of a breakup moment with the man that she loves, and uh, then Gamora, giving his Gamora. Gamora. Oh, sorry, I keep, yeah. mixing them <laughs> I keep switching them. I'm yeah. sorry. So Gamora is having this moment with he. Uh, he allows her this moment with Peter, like he really does love you. But and this is what says, we gotta I do. I like him. Like yeah. a dad would about a boyfriend. It's such a dad moment, yeah. and it's it's so weird because it was like, oh shit. Like then when they do get to the the part with Red Skull, um. It's like, oh, fuck. And like, you see it coming. So fascinating about that moment is that she is like, aha, you don't love anyone. She has no idea that he loves her. Yeah. Well, like, because yeah. what his idea of love is is yeah. so f- skewed. Yeah. But yeah, it's just. I like which, that I like that scene in particular because I was surprised. And and, and, I, and I don't mean this as quite the negative. But it is, I wasn't expecting to ever see Red Skull again. Yeah. Having no, not not quite the knowledge of comics, I was like... I was so happy. And I was like, it, it was a nice callback to the my favorite of the Captain America things in yeah. this whole universe. And I was like, what a nice way to tie that in. And just the ramifications of Red Skull out to there. To show the high cost of the Infinity and, Stones, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was such a... I just like that whole scene in, in and general. I but, love that even though they can get Hugo weaving back, they just went and hired somebody who could mimic him perfectly. And he's perfect! <laughs> perfect. Yeah. And I am personally connected to him which yeah. i think is funny i personally connected to red skull guys <laughs> i haven't seen him in I years mean, like, his impressions are amazing so but I there's love that he was there's doing pictures it. on the internet of me with the red skull wait who was nice. it um from uh, walking creating, dead aaron from walking dead uh ross markwind oh okay yeah, yeah. i worked with him on a movie in nice. chicago and i was just say hi we try to get ross on this show once we have he a couple was, times yeah. but the problem is his he's blowing sucks. up oh, now that he's red skull uh, yeah <laughs> well since he got on uh Walking Dead. Walking Dead. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh, Ross well, is now very successful, and I'll probably never really see him again. It's also, but yay! <laughs> it's also a means that they were willing to recast or kind of work around it, which yeah. means like, what the ramifications are like now that they have more confidence and they can do whatever they want. It's like, yeah, no, bring them all back. No one has to die. No one has to be permanent because it's you can do it. There can now like you you're starting to build this like little groundwork for like just replace them, replace yeah. the actor, and keep the character. Yeah. Like you don't have to be stuck to the actor now. I mean, that, I, that, even that's even though that's a small ramification in this yeah, movie, especially since he had a lot of makeup on. But and and there were a lot of movies between that we well, kind of didn't. I think it, he like, was all CG. I could be wrong, but I think I mean uh, that was I, one of the things in this movie that kind of bugged me was there was a lot of characters that didn't need to be CG that mm. totally were. That yeah. annoyed the crap out of me, and still annoys the crap out of me that those three are CG'd. Yeah, because they said like the the voice of Red Skull is Ross Marquand. He wasn't oh, on set, yeah. I don't think. Oh. Um, he's a, uh, that may have been the only yeah. one that like he's an was... A plus uh, comedian. Uh, what's the word when the comedians copy people? Impersonator. Impersonator. Yeah. There we are. He does My micro brain sucks, oh, guys. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone else's CG was really not good, but Red Skull's was fine. But like, if it was CG, I don't know. I the, the goons, squ- like Thanos's goon squad, was it was hard to watch, especially near the end once they were in broad daylight, where I'm like. Mm. Uh, and how do you? They how were do you very look so Steppenwolf bad? rendered. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. weird because Thanos looks so good, like so good. Like yeah. there's certain lightings where it's like he looks photo real, like he looks perfect. And then you have his children, and they're like, eh, they're okay. Like were were they on set or was it were they entirely CG? Because Thanos was mocap, which is they're the, both they're all mocap. Okay, yeah, which is weird because it didn't feel like they were mocap. Yeah, like, they, they, felt they felt so, so not a part of the world in any scene that they were in. Yeah. 
And it could just be that they had different faces, like because Thanos has a very humanoid face, mm-hmm. and none of them did. I mean, the girl kind girl of did. did, but she still had horns, and they made her eyes a lot bigger. So Thanos is just basically Josh Brolin's face turned into Thanos. It's right. a little bit easier to work with. Um, kind of like the Hulk with Mark Ruffalo. But, but speaking of the Hulk, uh, oh, I but, love the Hulk. That scene I, at the very, very end where they're all like the last scene of the movie where the Hulk is still in the thing. He like I can't not stare at it because he looks like shit. Oh, it looks so bad. It looks, looks, so, <laughs> it looks bad. so bad. And it's I know they probably didn't care because it's in the background, but it's like all I see yeah. as soon as oh. I'm not paying attention to anything else in that shot because I'm looking at how bad the Hulk. One was. of the biggest emotional punches in the whole movie, and you're like, why is there a cartoon <laughs> fucking Mark Ruffalo on top of that robot? Yeah, and uh, the proportions were so off. Uh, it, was, it was so it was like, weird. I mean, I, I, I gasped. And the, not in the right way. I was like, ah! The Hulkbuster suit has always been a problem for me because the proportions don't make sense. Like, where do your arms go? Like, they don't, they'd they snap in the shoulders. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. It bothers me, but it's fine. Like, it's I can let it go. Turn green and- and yeah, also, like, exactly. It's, it's, like, it's sad that, like, once again, the arc of Hulk is just completely, like, pushed off to, like, the next. Like, we keep, get, we keep eating little morsels, and I'm like... I want more. Of him. Like well, I, I like I like how they dealt like with him so much. He's become in... the franchise thread, though. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, like, just I, like I, just, I just miss Hulk's it. performance issues. I think more or less I miss it because he was such a good part of Thor Ragnarok, and I was like I liked seeing him, seeing him kind of like the ramifications of being stuck in as Hulk for two years, and like that control, that yeah. back and forth, and then now I was like. Okay, here's the scene where he gets punched out and that's it. No but more, but no at more. the end of Ragnarok, he was having trouble being the Hulk. Yeah. So it makes it's just a carryover but of his personality. Here's my thing with the, the Russo brothers. And I, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the Russo brothers. And I'm very glad that they're doing as much as they are. But there, yeah. there's something about when, when they, something doesn't connect with the fans. They don't let the fans have it. They're like, no, 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 you're seeing it wrong. And it's like, no, no, we're seeing what you put on screen. And right. if you'd messed up, that's on you. So they're talking about the Hulk's through line. Like Kevin Feige told Mark Ruffalo that he's not getting a Hulk movie because Universal's being a fucking asshole. So they just won't get the rights to distribute the Hulk movie. So be it. So they're going to give him an arc through Ragnarok, Infinity Wars, and Avengers 4, whatever that's called. And that's the new Hulk arc. Great. So in Hulk, in Infinity Wars, his storyline, as we all saw it, tell me if I'm wrong, he got the shit kicked out of him and didn't want to be Hulk anymore because he'd never lost a fight. That's kind of the. I mean, general that's how consensus. it plays out on screen, but yeah. they, they're like, it's like, there's more to it. And it's like, well, no, there's not. Like there, there might be, but the way that the Russo brothers have explained it is that he doesn't want to be Mark Ruffalo's muscle. Like he right. doesn't want to show up for that. And if you only give the Hulk the word, well, he no, did, yeah, he did achieve consciousness. Yeah, exactly. Like that's totally because there, there was and, also his whole facial expression while they're arguing in the yeah, Hulkbuster suit. I, I get that, but I don't think they. I don't think they nailed it. I think they needed more of showing something. If we want to see that the Hulk doesn't want to fight for Bruce Banner, I'm into that storyline. Yeah. But I need to see it somehow. Explain it, it somehow. Well, I got, got that info the outside of the yeah. movie. Only, a million other things that were I think the, within the context of his arc in Ragnarok, too, like if yeah. we're looking at this, if we're looking at Hulk as one movie spread across three movies, right. then like it kind of makes sense because movie one is dedicated to Hulk as Hulk. He's become a much more like playful, puppy-like He's a child, yeah. He's a child. He fights when he needs to, but he's actually kind of found, he he understands what it means to have friends. He understands sentience. Like, he, and it was really hard for him to go away when Bruce kicked him out. And so I think this one is not just that he lost a a fight or that he doesn't just want to be Bruce's muscle. I think, like, maybe he just wants to rest. Yeah, but it's also possible, like, for this movie, it seemed like Bruce Banner was the exposition for all the people who didn't see, like, the previous movies, and they kind of short-shrifted his story for the sake of making him the expository character. Yeah. I mean, in the the book, it's Silver Surfer. He's the one who shows up, and everyone's like, who the hell is this guy? And they just basically gave Silver Surfer's role to Mark Ruffalo, which is fine. I mean, like, I don't need Silver Surfer. The Silver Surfer's a crazy dated character that I don't care about anymore, but... But I see what you're saying, Brian, of, like... You can assume all these things, but what's on screen? The only time on screen you get the Russo brothers take on it is when at the end Banner says, "Oh, Hulk buddy, we got a lot to work through." Mm. That's the only line and the only like thing that hints to that. Yeah, because yeah. it's just and, and that just hints at there is more to this than just Hulk lost a yeah, fight. Yeah, because that's the thing is there's there's yeah. a whole third movie that's going to be working through his shit. Yeah, I would and imagine. if there's that many characters that they have to round up, it's like are the Russos going to actually do that, or are they going to be like here's the line yeah. at the end of the, the well, next or movie that covers? They're just going to tell you again. Well, this is what we intended. Well, we're well, I'm starting sorry. the next movie with very few characters yeah, compared yeah. to this one. It, so and there's something to be said where I have expected the Russo brothers to fail multiple times now, and they've proven me wrong every time. Yeah. So it's like you know I, I'm on board. Like I, I did not think they'd be able to pull off. 
Winter Soldier, they pulled it off fantastically. I don't think they'll pull off Civil War. They did for the most part, and then they made this thing, which I think is almost up there with Winter Soldier. Like they they can tell very complex, multiple character stories. So I'm not questioning them. I just I kind of wish that like if that's the story you wanted to tell, you should have told it instead of just assuming that we'd all get it based on one line of dialogue. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? Like, I know I'm being super critical because I have in the, to. In the way that Hulk doesn't <laughs> want to be the muscle, it's like, we don't really want to play detective to that story thread. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It, like, there's a lot just more going on it. that we need to focus on. Yeah, there's on. so yeah. many more storylines going on that are more interesting than that. And it's like, if that's the story you should have told, then we should have spent another five minutes with them. Like, that's it. Like, just five. But. Speaking of stuff happening on screen, is Hawkeye coming back? Yes. I know this is important to Chewie, I, I, love I, I, want Hawkeye, I don't but like Jeremy Renner. Hawkeye's butt. I know you don't like. I I like Jeremy Renner and I like. You might Hawkeye. not like Jeremy Renner's face, but you gotta like his butt. His butt. There's better butts in the MCU. Oh. Well, <laughs> until Nightwing gets a fucking movie, I feel like he's got the best butt in the comic book. Cap's world. got yeah. really good butt too, Cap's but the, oh, there's something Cap's about the Renner butt. butt. Can we call him Nomad? He's Nomad. He's right? Nomad now, but they're never yeah. gonna call him that. <laughs> Cap's got the best butt slash Nomad. Yep. Yeah, thank you. I, like you can't top Chris Hemsworth just because everything else is equally good or better doesn't mean that his butt is not best. <laughs> Thor's yeah. always been my like least got... hot of the Avengers. Oh, oh, wait, 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 I'm oh, not fucking I got such done. Such a man crush on him. Wait. Cut his hair. What? Instant like holy shit. I'm mm. not for him. Oh, I just, just wanted to I lick him since day, day one. <laughs> All right. Well, I have my biases. Yes. <laughs> I like long hair. I like beards. Uh, and I like yeah. Renner, but I like beards. I like short hair, and I like that he got a sense of humor a bit. I think that was also it. His Thor was really too serious in the first movie, and he's developed. I thought he was very funny in the when first movie. Not down a curse, curse. but I see that as a regression. So, uh, but either way, either way. Again, dumb and thing. pretty is but, also my kryptonite. Let, let's, let's talk <laughs> Thor in this movie because I thought Thor. Thor. Had, Thor for me had one of my favorite arcs oh beyond Thanos. God, it was really to, good. Yeah, his last his last moment with Thanos is like I was crying. It's it was so just, good. It was so character driven. It was like, I did it. it I won. Of, because ah, of course Thor, ah. who is always guided by his heart, guided by his emotions, would take someone down that way. Yep. He would yeah. never go for the head because that's like, no, you hit them where it hurts. And yep. and like, he was so driven by who he is in that yeah. moment. Like this heartfelt, loving hero. And Thanos is this, highly logical like deeply intellectual yep. chode and he it's just like this perfect clash of like what the whole what well, all of this has been building and thor to. gets an upgrade path and like i i kind of geek out like in anime too when i've watched it like when someone gets to upgrade their weapon or their suit mm. or they like they power up in a way i like i kind of geek out on that when and he I love opened when he, the forge that's so good only but if i he's die lost everything but he's lost everything and and, like, and you that's where that moment is even more heartbreaking because you're like he finally gets a win he did it he's 60 oh fuck he didn't even get that either but i love too that groot was his handle oh, that's that's so that 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 groot knows groot what it means to lose everything and also groot that was a character arc with very little to go off yeah. of, done well. Yeah, yeah there was so little time for Groot. They gave him one thing to do, and, and it was magnificent. perfect. Yeah, and like the the thing for me is like this is a movie that uh, it prioritizes action over story a lot of times, and tries to tell story through action, and that's fine. Like I I'm, I get it, what I'm sitting down for, but it nailed its down moments, which I didn't expect. Like there's a few down moments with Wanda and Vision that I think they did really well, but the mm -hmm. one for me that just crushes it is Rocket and Thor. Like, when yes. Rocket says it's time to play the captain and goes and tries to talk Thor out of fighting him. Like, you don't expect that from Rocket. Like, Rocket has, like, a moment of, uh, like, almost clarity of, like, I'm walking around with this damn pirate angel who's not qualified for this fight. Mm -hmm. I need to go see if I can get his head in the game. And it's awesome. Yeah. Like, it's so well... Because Rocket knows what it is to lose things. Like, he, we've hinted at it through two Guardians movies now and never actually fully explored it, but that's fine. Uh, and, like, I liked his way that he went after. He's like, oh, so you lost this person? Mom, dead, okay. Brother, dead, okay. Dad, dead, okay. Killed your sister. Are you sure you're ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a great, great moment for both Bradley Cooper and Chris Hemsworth. Like, it's a really, really solid I thought. Yeah. I agree. I, I honestly, everything about the Thor storyline, anytime he was on screen is when the movie really sang. It's like, especially too, because they've been shitting on the, tw the Thor franchise has just been Marvel's exposition bitch <laughs> for, for two movies. <laughs> And then they gave it to Taika, and it was beautiful. And then finally, all that heaving, this whole franchise, like carrying yeah. the franchise on his shoulder, never really getting a proper movie. And finally, he's the star. Like after Thanos, he's the star. Yeah, you know, he's and it kind was of the joke like, of 
both the other the other the other Avenger movies. Yeah. yeah. You know, like he's he's the punchline. Dost thou mother know wears her drapes? Yeah. And this is like heart arc. Like this is like the theme, the heart of the movie. Like, and he's still funny as shit. Yeah. And paired with Rocket, it was just like perfect. <laughs> when I would they watch land a on Earth, movie. it was like the his uh, hero his moment. um the, standoff the with Chris, uh, uh, Chris Pratt's character, um, Star Lord. Yeah. That whole like. What do you mean I'm raising lower my voice? <laughs> like the kind of the masculinity you off. You're yeah. a dude. He's a man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I really enjoyed that. And it's it's something to be said because most of the Avengers stuff, all their their main character you could argue throughout all of the movies is Iron Man. Like that has been our point character, it's where we started. He was definitely the main character of Avengers. He was pretty much the main character in Age of Ultron. And Thor treats him like an equal at the very end. He's like, You and I are alike. He he uh, Iron Man gets that speech, the, the the hero speech, or like, we're not so different. Like the, uh, I'm paraphrasing poorly, but you and I are both we are cursed with knowledge. Cur- I thought it was cursed with sight. Or no, cursed with knowledge. Like he says, knowledge. you 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 are like I'm yeah. like you. You're cursed with knowledge. Yeah, whatever but, that quote is. But but my thing, what I was saying is that like this is the first time where I feel like Iron Man kind of had to share the spotlight more, and they gave a lot more of it to Thor, and I think that was the right choice. Mm-hmm. But we can move into Iron Man because he still definitely is more of the point character because he always is. And I, I he I didn't st- like Doctor Strange questioning his choices. Perfect. Like, of course he does. He didn't like and any his beard, of them. Yeah. His beard competition. He was so grumpy the whole movie, which is fine. I mean, I, I get it, given where he is and how many times he's tried to save the world, and it just keeps happening over and over and over. So I understand his frustration, but it just like this for me felt the least of his arcs out of every movie he's been in. I just I liked it because he was a fish out of water. Like, yeah. even in his line of, I just learned magic exists, uh, yeah. all this stuff, of, like, you take a man who's very much science-based and used to being the smartest man in the room, and you flip the coin of, now he's in a world that he has no knowledge of. He has no knowledge of space, and he has no knowledge of magic. So he has to take a back step man, a little bit. Space is trying to steal a necklace from a yeah. wizard. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. But he takes a back step in every situation. Yeah. Like the, the, I, the idea to get Doctor Strange out of captivity comes from Spider-Man. The idea to take down Thanos comes from Peter Quill. Yeah. Like every single time that he wants to take the lead, somebody else steps in front of him and takes over. I think that was actually really good for his art because he's always been the boss. And in the end, it was everyone else's plan. And he learned to trust somebody else to, to like run the show. And Which, it was very much because, especially at the beginning, he was so resistant to Doctor Strange, yeah. and then at the end, because it was be, a world he knew nothing yeah. about, and like it, he can't, kind of like an still, annihilation. Yeah. Right. But at the end, yeah. to have that trust to to allow Doctor Strange's plan to go forward and yeah. not do what comes natural to Tony, which is just sort of boss everybody around and take over and fight. Instead, he he allowed the loss to be the win and trust Doctor Strange to be right about this. And I thought that yeah. was pretty good. And now it's all in his hands. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's where the last movie is going to be really powerful because it's Cause he, well, all it, in his hands. And I'll be interested to see what they do with it because, as Emily was just saying, he just learned to trust everyone. He trusted everyone and they lost. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see the new dynamic. And if they go that right, I mean, who knows? There's a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if they pay that off, that'll be good. But at least yeah. they've, they've set him up, I guess, for... Yeah. Something. I'm also excited to see him in Nebula because if there's anyone that can match his like I'm insecure about my family issues, <laughs> it's it's Neb. It's kind yeah. of weird. Like the, this movie paired off everybody in the she way that I was into hoping. Angst, he yeah. goes into depression. I love that she and Gamora finally got to finish their mm. arc too. Because in especially in Guardians Two, it was such the bummer is that it felt like Nebula was always having to apologize, even though she was like the bigger victim. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, she has every right to be angry. And then it was so great to see Gamora kind of return the favor Final, to, yeah, to, to, yeah. to finally give her what she needed to be yeah. the sister she needed her to be. Um, I'm trying to think of the other people that I really want to talk about in this movie that we haven't hit yet. We really we need to talk about Quill and Gamora. Like yeah. we, we did the breakdown. I'm not sure if you heard it. Uh, I know I didn't. But we need to talk I about... I got stuck somewhere around nowhere. Okay. <laughs> I, kept for, Which I, for, I forgot Peter Dinklage's name. That gave me a big long pause. Oof. Um, there, there's something to be said about the relationship between Peter Quill and Gamora. Because they've been kind of a thing for a while now. They've been kind of a thing, but they it's one of those fun where, things where it's fun for me because they've never been together sexually. I don't believe that, that they have. Of. I don't think that they I ever have so. been. Yeah, I, I would... I think that they definitely, it's one of those situations of Han and Leia where they've developed a big bond and they love each other, but like even though the the dude has hit on her continually, she's always said no, 
even though she clearly is also attracted to him. And then at the end, we get the... It's kind of like Star Wars, guys. Gamora does the whole sacrifice, essentially, and gets taken and stuff and put into carbonite. And he's left going, but... But I want to explore this again, guys, and he doesn't get the opportunity. I'm, I was going to... I had a thought in my head. I'm losing she, it so much She's someone who takes time, and, and he, for once, is willing to put the time in and wait for her. And I yeah. think... My, actually, my favorite moment for her in the entire movie is the very introduction of them when they're listening to Rubber Band Man, and she's singing and dancing along yeah. in her seat, <laughs> because that's not the same Gamora from the, big, from the first time we ever saw her. Right. And Peter has, like made her happier with herself oh they clearly it's have so a good. fantastic relationship they're like a really me, good mom and dad yeah yeah <laughs> and for the i love that their relationship is based entirely off of mutual respect mutual experience and trauma like they really bonded to each other very beautifully mm-hmm. And it didn't need to be sexual. Like, for me, that's one of the things I love in movies so much these days. When you can have either two women, two men, or a man and a woman have a deep love for each other and being able to illustrate that without a sex scene. And they do it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, the thing that I love about this movie with Quill and Gamora that I didn't expect them to do as well is... As much as I like the Guardians movies and I can enjoy them, I've never really felt that they've gotten Star-Lord down perfectly. I think yeah. Chris Pratt's a good cast for it, but it's like Star-Lord's kind of a shitty person. And like I feel like they've tried to make him more and more of a hero who kind of does and says shitty things. But, but they've just, only told us. Like, yeah, they've not really done a good job of showing us yeah, that development. He sucks as a hero. Like Contrasting him to Thor was so smart. Yeah. And like, then seeing how much he... F- fucked up throughout yeah. the whole he didn't do anything right this whole movie no and like that that is perfect star lord like he like the fact that the reason that his plan failed was him perfect star lord but it's because yeah. he loves her and that's why it's like you don't hate him for it you're just like dude don't do it oh no but yeah. you're not like you're like oh. but you need to stay rational when the yeah. entire universe is yeah. at stake at well, some point you need to let love go okay yeah. that leads but me that's, can i you probably go for it. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Because that was a recurring theme in this movie. Because Nebula, or, uh, now I'm doing it. <laughs> Gamora, Gamora gave up the location of the stone to save Nebula, mm-hmm. and Peter fucked up in and and in his rage over trying to save Gamora and fucking Wanda, not refusing to destroy, refusing to kill Vision when all of the people who died in Wakanda. It's like, we got to save Vision's life. It's like, eh, we're going to cost like thousands of lives to save Vision. Why can't you just, I mean, like, her, but, and I, and that's actually my biggest complaint about the movie. I feel like they didn't do a good enough job of establishing why they were trying so hard to save Vision. I, I wanted a little bit better of a strong, like, because, like, Vision was willing to sacrifice himself. I wish Wanda had pushed harder and be like, no, I'm not going to do it, period, at all. And, like, maybe there'd been a fight over it. Instead, it was like, Wanda's like, I'm not doing it. And they're like, oh, okay, I guess we'll sacrifice all these lives to protect him. Well, it was the, they hit it with the one theme of we don't trade lives. Like, that's the, yeah. supposed to be the theme running through everyone's plot line, but then they all systematically, one by one, start trading lives. Trade yeah. lives. Because when you're, put into certain situations you have to think about the greater good no i get it but which is exactly what thanos believes he is doing yeah. exactly that's why i like it because they're all like we do not trade lives it's not what we do thanos is the guy who does that and they all end up doing it to try to stop thanos and it's it's a very interesting push it's interesting and pull. though because it becomes their motivation it's again it's all about the head versus the heart yeah kind mm-hmm. of thing like they're mm-hmm. trading lives because of love yeah and because they're all people who at this point have lost just about everything. Yeah. The only one who still has his people is Tony Stark, which I think is why he had to take a back seat. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you that know, makes sense. Yeah. like it just like that's that's where they're at right now. And so he's the that's why he had to take a back seat. But yeah, they're all doing it from a heart place. Thanos is doing it from a head place. And it's really fascinating. Well, he's doing yeah. it from a heart place, too, because his world was destroyed because no one listened mm. to him. He tried to save yeah, his world. He tried to save his world by doing exactly what he just did to the entire galaxy. But for him, it's not just about balance. I think he's doing it out of love as well. Like, I think he sees himself as a loving savior. But in order to do that, he needs to destroy Sure, I could see. Well, that. he has to use the yeah. logic to get to that. Like yeah. he has to use the the head, yeah, in a perverted way to kind of. Because in an infinite universe, there is also infinite resource. He just lacks creativity. Yeah, because he's a highly like a hyper logical nutchin. 
but <laughs> yeah. he is very he, for me he's being hyper logical because of his emotions where he, sure, yeah. he wants to save everyone but he, he feels he needs to be bare bones to do that again to me that works into his he believes he's the hero of his own story uh, he's the oh, hero yeah. of this movie like, yeah if you're following his story, oh, no, he definitely believes he's a hero. Yeah, I know. No question just, about yeah. that. But it's like I don't think he's doing it purely out of logic. No. Like I think that mm. is doesn't work in his narrative. I uh, I think he'd be yeah. really mad at you for saying yeah. that. <laughs> I see what you're saying, yeah. like yeah, on a metatextual I, level. But I think Thanos would be like, no, this is why we choose half the population at random. Yeah, plus he, he's like, I sacrificed logical. my daughter, for which there's another one. I sacrificed my daughter for this. That's, yeah. you know, yeah, he's look sacrificing at logic over things, but The score is even. Like, it's all about the ledgers for him. It's all about the sense of balance. And that, like, yeah. Hmm. But, see, it, but if your sense ways, of yeah. if yeah, your sense of balance sure. is about yeah, yeah. the universe as a whole, like, it's kind of like environmentalists right now, it do we, because like in our world right now, a lot of the things against environmental is the heart about like, well, we need to this water for this scenario, but it's like, I love the earth, so we need to stop tapping into this water so we can preserve the earth. Mm -hmm. Do we preserve the whole or do we just preserve the person? And that's why for me, he's trying to preserve the whole out of love. This whole which, movie is about love. Yeah. Yeah. In a not annoying way. Aww. Uh, speaking about love, the the last couple I want to talk about in this thing, uh, and then there's one other character we have to hit because we have to at least attempt to because the movie didn't. Um, I want to talk about Vision and Wanda. Because they're my piece. I I like Vision and Wanda together. I think they're one of my favorite characters in the comics, and they somehow make it work. And it is one of those pairings that when the movie started, I'm like. I'm surprised they're going through with this. They kind of hinted at it at Civil War, but I yeah. still was like, I don't know if Marvel is going to have the balls to pull off Robot and Lady having an actual relationship. I, I like the way that they that they interact, and I think the movie did a really good job showing that. Of like, no, these two, just they just get along. Like They just understand each other. Well, from they both the have these weird-ass powers. Yep. You know, like, she has the power mm -hmm. of an Infinity Stone without having an Infinity yeah. Stone. So I love that line where yeah. is like, why was she up there all this time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then he's yeah. So they both have these these like inexplicable like deep old powers, you know. Yeah. And also like he's not fully robot. I mean he's fully synthetic, but yeah. he is pieces of Tony and pieces of Bruce yeah. and like pieces of the knowledge of everything and A the beginnings of, of the universe. Yeah. He's yeah. magic. And I thought the the <laughs> idea to take him out in the very beginning was incredibly smart because yeah. they've made him so powerful, like insanely powerful that. He shows up to a fight, and the fight's no longer worth fighting because he's going to win. That's why he wasn't in the first fight in Civil War, because if he'd shown up, none of the Civil War movie would have happened. He would have taken care of it. Like, they know that, so take him out instantly. Props to smart villains. I was surprised at the yep. strategy involved. I was like, oh, okay, the heroes have to actually think now. Yep. I'm like, oh, you just lost your uh, your best weapon. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, the other person that I feel we need to talk about, because for some reason, Marvel's been really okay to her this entire time, is Black Widow. Yeah, she got some fight sequences, and she got to look at uh, no story Bruce arc, really. a little Nothing. lovingly, and then yeah, she like, still talk didn't about a zip up character. guys. Just, yeah. just I need to make sure everyone realizes, in the entirety of this franchise, she has never fully zipped. <laughs> she will never fully zip. That cleavage is out. I like, wish Okoye would say something like, "Girl, just your <laughs> shirt." I mean, can I you feel like she started. started as, be the best she just, started like, as like an like, assassin spy, <laughs> so maybe like her boobs are a weapon to her. Yeah, um, yeah. but maybe just, she keeps her phone in there. Zip it, yeah. <laughs> zip it, girl. Because I know, I know, sand is getting in there when you're fighting out on that field. Sand is so dry. Sand in a bra. Really, like, it's a hate it. Sand, you think she have a really good sports not bra? Like you you. Can't have a really good sports bra that's that low cut. That's nope. a good point. Nope. She's got sandy boobs, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just and she never pulls boobs. her hair off. I know, it's a sequel, no one, <laughs> it's no a sequel one, to my favorite television song. And Okoye, that's why Okoye's the best, because she's you know, yeah. like she's like no hair. Everybody else has got these long, luscious, like Black Widow's always messing with her hair. It's always down. You the, can't fight with your hair no, down. No. It will get everywhere. Nope. But it's like every movie so far with Black Widow in it has done something for her. Maybe not the greatest storylines ever. She hasn't always like beyond Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier's really the best good. by far. Um, but like even Iron Man 2 they gave her something like everyone's done something this is the first one where it's been like oh well, we got Scarlett Johansson to show up and stand there and then you know we'll let her 
be around the bad guy when it's killed but otherwise they give her nothing i was okay with that i'm like i feel really bad i'm like kind of over scarlett johansson at this point see i'm i i'm i'm not but it's like i I just i love black widow that's where i'm at it's like i think it's just such a weird character like progressively like there's this like scarlett johansson is mad that she's black widow at this point there's just nothing they should have do the like femme they, fatale super spy just doesn't i mean they've never really done anything to make her feel special exactly like that's like so. if you want to keep putting her in these movies then keep her as a character and especially every, with like, okoye just right there like yeah. well you have okoye you, know? you have scarlet witch you have all these other badass women around it's like if you still yeah. want to keep her gamora here, then give and her, nebula yeah. like and shuri guys yeah like you have oh, all you of tried. these <laughs> it's like give her something like if you're gonna give everyone else all these great things you've had her around since iron man 2 like she has been here for everything and i mean they've already they're already getting rid of like hawkeye because like yeah they just don't, they have nothing for him to do in any of these movies so and, like why not do that to her at this point? There's yeah. no re- good reason for her to it's, be here. It's, well, it's the Disney promise. We're going to make a female movie at some point, guys. <laughs> we're going to make Look, a Black Widow movie. We're keeping her around. <laughs> well, they kind of did to Falcon, too. I mean, she and Falcon were basically Cap's sidekicks in this movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he did, although I do, it's very little, and it's I do love the relationship between Patriot and Falcon. Like, so good. The two of them, yep. like, flying guys, you know, yep. and how concerned he yeah. was at the end. Oh, when he's walking around like, Sam, Sam. I was like, no, <laughs> Sam's gone. You're, but you're just proving more of my point of, like, everyone got something more than Black Widow. That's a good point. She yeah. was just completely forgotten. She Ex- says gross at one point. When, yeah, she goes, that was know, gross. That was That's gross. Like it. Otherwise, she does nothing. She has one moment where she goes like, oh, Bruce is here. I'm going to stand over here and not say anything. Or, I'm going to look says, at him like, lovingly. When she says, like, you're all alone. She's like, I'm not alone. And then there's the Koye there. And yeah. they're both like, yes. Everyone who's way better than she is. So it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. It's- On the other hand, like, and that that's the, her potential is she's one of the people who's fighting without any fucking superpowers. And there are a few of them, but, like, more, they could do more things yeah. with that. They, um, they could have done anything with her and they just ignored the, the whole The entirety time. of Wakanda's fighting without superpowers. That's true. Except for Black yeah. Panther. But I mean, that's one thing that's cool about that they don't really explore is the fact that you have a vision who can do fucking anything. And then you have all these characters who are fighting the same battle just because they've done a lot of training. But yeah, and that's why Hawkeye was original in, or interesting in the first Avengers mm-hmm. and why he's kind of not needed anymore because we have plenty of other people who can do the same thing. Yeah. Um, but they, they probably felt like they couldn't leave her out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I so- do. I Yeah, I wish that they had done more with Black Widow with uh with Natasha and Bruce, because yeah. I always did like that relationship. Yeah, Again, it, it made a, well. it made a lot of sense. Like two people who she's purposely on the sidelines so she can move through life yep. unnoticed, and he sidelines himself so he doesn't become Hulk. And, and you they know, both like have a lot of suppressed anger. Yeah, and it, it's it obvious works. that they have a lot of affection for each other. I mean, when she does see him, there's this moment, and mm-hmm. I, you know what, I'd be okay with a romance between them. Yeah. I, I normally like Black w- Widow. You know, you're like, oh, but let her be. Well, it's okay. She's allowed to love. Yeah, you know, oh, and, and and it would strong actually strong women really, are definitely yeah, allowed and to it love. would be really interesting. <laughs> And they've done enough movies of platonic relationships. It's okay to yeah. give her a boyfriend. And I think the relationship with her and Burris would be kind of amazing. And maybe they'll go there in the next one. I maybe. just, I feel like with somebody who's been around this long, if you're going to keep her in the movie, give her something. Yeah. Um, and and then not a story about how her ovaries don't work, please. Yeah, that's a swing and a miss. Um, is there anything else we haven't hit on this thing? Do we want to talk about its complete weird resemblance of Phantom Menace? Anybody? No? No. Mm. Uh, the, uh, yeah because it's a scene a battlefield on a big oh, open yeah, yeah. green field with a big force field bubble a and a whole bunch of people yeah. have force uh. field shields it's the same thing it's um, nuts. except with less gungans significantly less gungans, <laughs> less <laughs> gungans. the gungans are on the st- other side of the bubble they're supposed to be on the inside of the bubble they're on the outside they change one thing they but yeah we do have like Mesa these nameless uh, <laughs> things that are just charging forward and don't look very good they're led by someone who knows what he's doing that's, that's yeah. an improvement but it still looks way too oh, I really it's great like... to know that we'll have to have another scene like that in the next big movie yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from Marvel just because yeah yeah I really like that Rocket tried to steal Bucky's arm. Yeah. That made me happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very important. So the the comedic notes in this movie, I think, were less... Um, undercutting. Uh, undercutting than yeah. other ones. Like, especially, like, how many times everything was undercutted in the Doctor Strange film. Like, all the little side gags in this movie, they didn't linger on them. They let them happen. They moved on. They may- felt organic. Yeah. Like, I really the, appreciated it. The Brewster it. brothers are better at it. Like, they, yeah. they get it. Like, the, the fucking, I don't want to steal somebody's quote, but the when Captain America meets Groot, fucking great. Like, yeah. it's a great, like. I am Groot. I am Steve Rogers. Yeah, it's funny, it's, and it's, it made complete sense that it happened. Because yep. Cap is so polite. He'd just be like, oh, yes, talking tree, welcome to Earth. <laughs> I, but I, the, 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 scene, the moment right before that where Thor was like, this is my friend, tree. Yeah. <laughs> 
he has and he calls a rocket a rabbit. Which yeah. which makes you <laughs> wonder, true. like, if Groot's name has really been Tree this whole time uh-huh. since Thor speaks, speaks Groot. Groot. That's true. I am Tree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Um, can I do one little yep. story? Is that I saw this movie at the Cinerama Dome on opening night. The Russo brothers came out. Kevin Feige came out. Tom Holland came out and yelled, I'm alive! And then Benedict Cumberbatch came out and went, um, I'm also alive! <sighs> and then everyone was like, oh, that was weird. But we moved on. And the Russo brothers said some stuff. Kevin Feige said some stuff. And then Tom Holland leaned over and whispered something to Kevin Feige. And he went, oh, 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 you guys haven't seen this movie? And they were like, no, they haven't seen it. He goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. And that's what... You fucking spoiled it, but it was okay because we didn't know you'd spoiled it, you dipshit, until you corrected yourself. And then everybody in the theater was like, wait a minute. So I guess Spider-Man fucking dies in this movie. Thanks, Tom Holland. You know, Tom Holland has the uh, the <laughs> reputation out of everyone in Marvel. He spoils everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They won't let him read a full script. They won't give him a full script. They won't let him go near people. It's almost like he's a shit teenager, guys. So, like, I <laughs> had a really excited. It's like, all it's a, excited. I mean, I think it's all a put on, though. Yeah. yeah. Like, know. 100%. All I know is I had avoided watching trailers. I had avoided reading articles. I had avoided all spoilers. And five minutes before I'm supposed to watch this goddamn movie, Tom Holland tells me that he dies. If anyone's going to do it, it's cool that it was Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't like his going away. His whole like whimper. I don't want to go. Just you like he David fought Tatt. it harder than anybody <laughs> else. So though. it's just such a, like it's one of the reasons why I don't li- really like his version of Spider-Man because he's so attached to Iron Man. In, like, all of his Spider Man ness is thanks to Iron Man. He just doesn't feel like his own superhero to me yet. I mean, that is exactly where he was pre Civil War in the books, and that's why people don't like him. That's why they split in Civil War, and he goes off to be his own thing. So it, there mm. is precedent for it in the okay. books. Okay. Um, but I think we should move into the end of this thing. And before we jump into quotes and whatnot, I've been looking There's at so my, many good quotes. There's so many good quotes. But before we jump into that, I, I have been looking at my phone this whole time with notes that have been provided by fan of the show Matt Dykes. And I want to say thank you, Matt. I really appreciated them. Thank you. Doing your work for you. Yeah. Uh, quotes, 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 quotes. Go for it. Obviously, I've been talking about this the whole podcast when Thanos looks at Thor and says, You should have gone for the head. It's a good moment. He could have gone for the arm as well, but the head makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like movies that can talk about love in non-annoying ways. Uh, and one of the best lines t- for me, uh, similar to when Han replies to Leia with, I know, uh, when Vision is being destroyed uh, and he goes to... Um, my friend her real name is Wanda uh, and he just goes all I feel is you I'm like oh, oh that is such oof that's a good line <laughs> it's a good one <laughs> uh, I am gonna go with uh, I'm trying to remember the exact quote uh, I just I like I like funny I like it when movies like this when there's all this horrible sad stuff can make me laugh still and uh, leave it to Drax to always <laughs> make me laugh and when Peter Quill and Gamora have been standing there having their wonderful moment and they see Drax, how long have you been standing there? An hour. <laughs> and he goes on for a whole bunch of other explanations, but it's just the an hour just fucking killed and, me. And then I like he it when he's, he's deflated by, uh, by Mantis. By Mantis. Oh. We're like, hi, Drax. Oh, yeah. And then he leaves. Damn That's it. actually my quote was also Drax because yeah. we didn't talk about him at all. Um, and, and my favorite thing about Drax is that he does not understand social cues and he doesn't understand why people are doing things they're doing, but he thinks he does. Yep. And that's what makes him funny. So when they're when when they finally uh, Tony Stark and, and Peter finally meet on the ship and he's just like, where's Gamora? And Tony's like, I'll do you one better. Who is Gamora? And Drax on the floor goes, I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? <laughs> <laughs> and he thinks he said something really fucking clever. Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Drax. <laughs> mm, all right. Uh, so, I you know I like the interactions between all the characters, but uh, I think my favorite one is with uh, Stephen Strange and Peter Quill when they first meet up on the board the ship, and uh, Stephen is like, "Okay, let me ask you this one time: What master do you serve?" And Peter Quill's like, "Oh." oh. <laughs> What master do I serve? What am I supposed to say? Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> like, like a total earth person thing to do. That's Where how he finds out he's from earth. I'm from oh, Missouri. From earth. <laughs> That's on earth. Because he knows who Jesus is. Yeah. 
<laughs> that whole sequence is so great. That's a oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Finally, because this is the first time we've seen Peter meet someone else from Earth in that. And all he wants yeah. to do is talk about Footloose. <laughs> it's still the oh best movie God. ever, his right? Face, his face when Spider-Man says it was never the best movie. He's so like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, he's uh, going to punch he'd... a child. <laughs> he's like, immediately, Spider-Man, it's not okay. <laughs> I kind of wish he'd shot him. Just... <laughs> uh, that was everyone, no, right? Mr. Stark, I don't want to go. <laughs> I believe in Footloose. <laughs> <laughs> that was everyone right yeah. yeah okay so review system for this thing i'm going to do what i do for every marvel movie and you have to review it with another marvel movie mm. it gets easier every time because there's more marvel movies it's getting hot in here hot in her so take do you want me to clothes. can i go yeah i mean the obvious one would be avengers yeah <laughs> avengers assemble because you know so the Avengers finally assembled, but they still haven't said Avengers assemble. <laughs> yeah, thanks, editor who cut Steve, uh, Steve Rogers out. He, uh, they never let him finish the line. Joss mm-hmm. Whedon would not let him say assemble because then he knew that Disney would eventually put the full line in. So no, that wasn't the editor's fault. That was yeah. Joss Whedon. No, I know. <laughs> well, I'll just go with Guardians, the first Guardians movie. Okay, yeah. That's because a good one. I didn't know, I had an idea of what to expect, but I wasn't sure if they were going to pull it off. And they did a lot of things that I was just like, oh, yes, I enjoyed that. Uh, in the same respect, I'm going with Iron Man, the very first Iron Man, because that was it was the test. Marvel has Marvel Studios now, and they're no longer beholden to a whole bunch of other people. They kind of have Paramount in the wings for distribution, but it's Marvel running the show. And I wasn't 100 percent that a comic book company could make the movies. And I was a little sketchy on it, just like I didn't know if someone could pull off a movie of Infinity Wars. And I think they did both times. Um, I'm going to actually go with Doctor Strange. Uh, this was the one movie that I watched after I watched Avengers. It was because I hadn't seen it in a while and I don't own it. So I was just like, well, I need to watch Doctor Strange again. And I feel like that movie introduced the Marvel Universe to magic. And mm-hmm. this movie brought magic to the Avengers and created sort of, a, in a, on a smaller scale, but a sen- the same like, kind of sense of wonder that you got from looking at the world of Doctor Strange where the world just instantly got bigger. Totally. Uh, I'll go with the uh, Winter Soldier. Because uh, after the first... Uh, Captain America movie, I was like, well, where are they going to go from this? Like, people generally don't do well with Goody Two Shoes characters and all that. And Fish Out of Water, like, what are they going to do with this? And I was pleasantly surprised and very, uh, I liked the construction of the movie and the characters. They did well by them for the most part. And it was a, a good, like, follow up. Whereas this seems like actually a good follow up to the line of Avengers movies. Perfect. No one works. So that brings an end to Avengers Infinity Wars. <laughs> or uh, is it? Uh, we might do an episode on Ant-Man and the Wasp when it comes out. We might not. There's not really a ton to chew on in that movie, so I'm not sure if I'll even have an hour's worth of conversation with it. It is the it. first movie where they almost make a woman the star. <laughs> so maybe there is a conversation in there somewhere. We'll you're, figure it out. They're getting there, guys. Yeah. Go back steps. to TV, Paul, right? Baby Captain steps. Marvel, yeah. Captain Marvel, Captain yeah. Marvel. After 13 years, Captain Marvel. Well, 11 I want years. I want it now. Yeah, I mean... It, I wanted it 10 years ago. Yeah. We'll get I, there. I worked on a commercial with someone who worked on Ooh. for Captain Marvel, and I cannot repeat what I was told, but I'm very excited. For nice. Something something uh, I was told on that Does she that fully set, zip? I... <laughs> so, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm going to take a leap. It was implied. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Don't worry. Sick. You didn't spoil anything. It has been successful. Make sure you bleep that out. Yeah. <laughs> told me under no circumstances am I yeah. allowed to repeat what you told me. Um, just do a big bleep. What yeah. <laughs> told me, not told me under no circumstances am I allowed to peep what they said. There's going to be a lot of bleeps right there. Mm. <laughs> under bleep, there's no bleep bleep. <laughs> oh, bleep, bleep, bleep. That would sound dirty. <laughs> it was bleep. It was bleep. And you Thanos killed Captain it. Marvel. You what? Should... <laughs> <laughs> you should translate it to Groot. <laughs> that would be amazing. I'm Groot. I'm Just, Groot. We're moving into plugs because this is happening naturally. When we have problems on Venture Brothers, we now just use Helper. And we have figured out a way to have Helper talk for us. So listen to Venture Bros, a Venture Brothers podcast. Uh, and then coming up soon, we have a new podcast coming from... For me, Samantha. <laughs> it's called Samwise. And I believe I can... I believe that every question in life can be answered by watching Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy and the special features. And I mean any question. It doesn't have to be fantasy related. Um, So if you have any questions just like pressing at the back of your mind or in the front of your mind, email me at sam.wise.ath at gmail.com. 
Say that one more time, just in case people weren't listening. Sam.wise.ath at gmail.com. Send me your questions. I will answer. Well, the Lord of the Rings will answer them. I am just a conduit for something bigger. Than <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And uh, do we, we don't have an official launch date for that thing, but it will be soon. Soon. I'm hoping beginning of September. Yeah. Yes. All we need is questions. Questions for answers. John, anything to plug? Uh, just uh, rate and review us, all the podcasts, especially Samwise when it comes out. Yep. Uh, if you, The more you do it, the closer to the beginning of a, of a podcast, that seems well, to work well. To be fair, Samwise will live in our feed for a little while, and then yeah, yeah. then we will branch out. Right. We write articles, too. Check We'd... out ATH Pod. Is it ATH Pod or ATH hyphen pod? What the fuck is our website? I'm glad you Great asked, plug. Emily. <laughs> it's... Uh... <laughs> It's ATHpod.com. All right. Go there. Read our articles because every week we're putting out, what, two articles? I don't know what's going every on. Every Wednesday and Friday. So on Monday, listen to Venture Brothers. On <laughs> Tuesday, listen to Samwise. On Wednesday, read an article. On Thursday, after the hype. And on Friday, read another article. We Woo! keep you busy. We all hear uh, for you. Uh, That's going to be bad when we add more podcasts to that. Where does it go? <laughs> On a There's two Saturday and Sunday. The podcast I'm going to do is only like 20 minutes long, so you can like slide that in. Same though. Perfect. Oh. On a side plug, linking <laughs> into what Emily was talking about a with magic plug. into the Marvel Universe, please watch Legends of Tomorrow because the next season, well, they already introduced magic into DC on the television with Constantine, but now Constantine is going to be a co-star in the new <gasps> Legends of Tomorrow. What? Really? And it's going to be an entire season of Magic, guys. <gasps> and Legends of Tomorrow is already the bomb-ass show, and I'm stealing the word from Sam because I never say bomb-ass. <laughs> um, Tits. Seriously, to me, it is the best one on CW right now. Please start watching it. Oh, my God. If you didn't watch last season, all I have to say is oh, Bebo, Bebo! Oh, my God. The best payoff. The, Fucking you, The entire Bebo. season, you build up to the that moment and then it's a sploosh oh bebo is so good i want to i didn't finish it i guess oh my it. god bebo 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 i'm just gonna end this podcast people i don't want to go i don't